Contractors versus Adjusters, go! Hello and welcome back to the Contractors versus Adjusters podcast with Peter Croso, where we teach restoration contractors how to sell their services to the insurance industry. Today, Peter, I wanted to ask you, what is the Managed Repair Program and how can contractors be involved in them? Okay, well, a Managed Repair Program is something that was initiated by the insurance industry um, as a, an organization or a company that vets contractors. So an insurance company can go to one managed repair program, and let's call it the ABC managed repair program. Okay. Sometimes referred to as TPAs or third-party administrators uh, or vendor programs, vendor management programs, VMP. So they'll go to that company and they'll say, you vet all the contractors for me. You check out their financials, make sure they're viable, make sure they're honest, make sure they're licensed and make sure they're committed to our company and they're gonna service following certain criteria. And there's various criteria that the different managed repair programs will do. And why a contractor would wanna be a part of that is because they would be on call to get to be brought into repair situations for that insurance company. So let's say an insurance company that writes 10,000 policies on the East Coast of Florida uh, if they're going through a managed repair program, they've got a list of 50 or 100 or 150 contractors that have already been vetted to do repairs the way they'd like. So th there is a very desirable appeal to managed repair programs. Now, you have to jump through some hoops. You have to use pricing that they dictate. And there are other certain rules that you might have to do that over the years I have not liked. I had a very embarrassing uh, session one time when I was asked to speak on a panel. And I, at that time, I just, I was in a bad mood and I think I trashed managed repair programs. I just utterly devastated them, all the negative <laughs> things that I felt about them. And then right next to me was a nice young lady who was the president of a managed repair program. <laughs> I had no idea. I would not have been so nasty if I knew she was sitting there. And, and so she had a couple of interesting barbs back at me for that. And, but I profusely a, a apologized to her afterwards. I shouldn't have been so opinionated. And that's all it was, opinion. I have known contractors who were very successful making a great living in managed repair programs because they felt like at least you know what the rules are, you can comply with those rules and maintain your profitability, but you're going to get work. And that's the idea. And I've heard some complaints, contractors are unhappy that they're not getting enough work and, and so on. But, but basically, they're an idea that's not going away. They're a concept and mm -hmm. they may represent somewhere around 30 to 50% of the available repair work in insurance industry, in the insurance repair industry. So it's something that you, you probably should look into, and, and yet there are very large, successful companies that won't even touch it. They won't mm -hmm. go in that direction, and they don't want to do residential work anyway because there is a lot of problems with residential work. But um, that is what a re managed repair business is. And then you don't even have to market, uh, more or less, because they're getting you work. They're, they're feeding you work. And then your, your focus is on getting that work done according to the prescriptions that are a, a part of this managed repair program. So. Got it. So you're playing by their rules. They're helping to feed you business. And it's so in a way, it's kind of like a marketing plan. And if you are a contractor, sorry, what you going to say? No, that's it. Absolutely. It's a marketing plan. I hadn't, hadn't thought of it that way, but it absolutely is. Yeah. And I could see you talked about the, the contractors who are doing really well. And I could see if, especially if you're playing by a certain set of rules and all that, you could probably create a good system for yourself to, to really systematize what you're doing. It's very formulaic. And yeah. as long as nothing strays outside and, you know, you've got a similar type of risk all the time, like so certain insurance companies, they write a certain type of risk 
that are almost all alike because they have a formula. This is the kind of policy we're going to sell. This is the kind of policyholder we're going to sell to. This is the location we're going to be in. And every it's like a rubber stamp. So so if you can cr- blend into that formula and get your job and your work done and maintain a healthy workforce and profitability uh, process, you're going to be good. So, yeah. so and, and I have a good friend who owns a managed repair company. I've never done work with him. I just know him on a personal level. <laughs> He's very successful. I know what his headaches are, um, and uh, it's it's a viable thing. So you need to take a look at that if you can possibly be a part of it. Cool. Well, well, we certainly will, and it's good to know there are some pros and cons out there. Sounds like a like a overall a good thing that people should definitely know about. So it's um, that is managed repair programs, and this is contractors versus adjusters. Yeah, we don't want people fighting. We want people building relationships. <laughs> Cool. Well, thanks again for listening. Find us on Spotify, YouTube, all the places, all the all the places that you listen to music and, and podcasts. So thanks again. We'll see you next time on Contractors versus Adjusters. <laughs>